Hello there Star Wars fans, episode 5 of the Bad Batch has just been released and the episode's name is Rampage. Now this I believe will be foreshadowing to future events for the Bad Batch, which I'll go over at the end of the video. And I just want to say there were a lot of game changing easter eggs in this video. So at the beginning of the video we have Omega being fitted with a comm device, making her feel like she's part of the team and the comm device looks very similar to the Mandalorians. Now the Bad Batch make their way to Ord Mantell. Now Ord Mantell was located in the mid rim and part of the Bright Jewel Sector. Now this planet was first mentioned by Han Solo in The Empire Strikes Back when he was trying to pay his debt to Jabba the Hutt. Now as far as we know the planet did not have any known native sentient species but was mostly made up of Falleen and humans. The planet was also a safe haven for bounty hunters, which the local government preferred to hire as an alternative to a police force, making Ord Mantell a safe haven for bounty hunters and smugglers alike. We learned that the main goal of the Bad Batch has shifted and is now to find out why bounty hunters are after Omega, and who are they. And just as a side note, I love when they're walking through the city and the Bad Batch have a stranger danger conversation with Omega setting up some ground rules for her. Now the reason why the Bad Batch came to Ord Mantell was that Echo mentioned the Jedi had an informant named Sid. Now the only mention of a battle on Ord Mantell in Legends and Canon was the Battle of Ord Mantell, a very creative name for the skirmish. Anyways, the Jedi that attended the battle was Ki Adi Mundi, who was a Jedi Master on the Council. And in order for Grievous to escape, he slaughtered a whole town which led Ki Adi Mundi to tears when reporting the devastation. So I wonder if the Jedi that Sid worked with was Ki Adi Mundi. When the Bad Batch entered the cantina, they asked a the female Trandoshan who Sid is. Now the Trandoshans were first introduced in Empire Strikes Back. And the first depiction is when we see Boss on the bridge along with other bounty hunters of the Executor. Now this may be our first on-screen version of a female Trandoshan we've had. All others we have seen in live action and animation have been male. Shortly after, Clone Force 99 was going to retreat empty-handed when Omega confidently proclaims that the Trandoshan is actually Sid. And once again, Omega shows an enhanced intuition, making me think more and more that she's actually force sensitive. And that's when we enter Sid's office. And there are loads of Easter eggs in there. On the walls we have multiple Phase 2 Clone Trooper helmets, one which appears to be a clone pilot's helmet, a bantha hide right behind her chair, a bottle of Wyron's Reserve Corellian Whiskey, which would make sense since they are in mid rim near the Corellian sector. And this whiskey was a favorite of Corellians, such as Wedge Antilles and Coran Horn. There is also an additional object on the front of her desk that I'll come back to later. We see Jango Fett's Westar 34 blaster pistols on the wall above her. And finally, we see a white Mandalorian helmet. Yes, this appears to be the white prototype Boba Fett helmet. Now, Boba Fett's earliest concept art featured him in all white armor, and he was originally planned to be a super trooper in The Empire Strikes Back. And my prediction is that we could be seeing Omega wear this armor in the future. Now, if the Bad Batch wants information on these bounty hunters, they must do a job for Sid who coined them as mercenaries. And at the beginning, Echo was about to protest, but he seemed to accept the title after digesting it for a moment. Sid goes over the job and informs them they are to rescue a bounty named Wuchi, taken by Zygerian slavers. Now the Zygerians were a humanoid feline species, and they were first seen in the comic Clone Wars arc, Slavers of the Republic, which in turn was adapted into three episodes of the Clone Wars TV series. Wrecker's head begins to hurt again, once they land outside their destination of Old Ord Mantel City. And there is definitely something happening with his inhibitor chip after three episodes of this. We see a Corellian YV-865 Aurora class freighter, which was vastly used by the Zygerians for slave transport. So in turn was best known as a Zygerian slave ship. Wrecker mentions a smash and grab on Kuwait, which is a core world with one of the most prominent shipping yards in the galaxy that encircles the entire world. Back at its cantina, we see a hologram with an individual speaking Huttese inquiring about the bounty for Jabba. And we learn later it's Bib Fortuna, who Luke Skywalker forced mind tricks in Return of the Jedi. And later we see he's taken over Jabba's empire after the Crime Lord's death but is easily disposed of by Boba Fett at the end of Mandalorian Season 2. Back on Ord Mantell, Echo is attacked by Brizak, which are native to Zygeria and is a ridden mount for Zygerian slavers. And here is one of the cutest things in the whole episode. Omega names a gonkroid Gonki. I mean, if you don't love that, do you even have a soul? We see the Zygerian slavers carrying blasters that fire nets. 
and they are also carrying Zygerian crossbows, which Omega will pick up later. And this seems to be potentially the non-lethal weapon that Omega will use till she's older, similar to Ezra in his stun bolt slingshot. The Zygerians tell the clones that they will be slave, which Echo remarks the Republic outlawed slavery, which in turn was met, there's only the Empire now, depicting the lawlessness that's taking over the galaxy with the sudden fall of a major government. The green aliens we see are Faleen, whose species were first introduced in Shadows of the Empire by a villain named Prince Zizer, who was the head of the Black Sun Syndicate and who had dreams of destroying Vader and becoming the Emperor's right hand man or alien. The head slaver mentions that now that the Republic is gone, they can return to Kadovo to rebuild what was taken from them. And this is a reference to the slaver's arc in the Clone Wars series, where the Separatists took the entire population of the Togruta to Zygeria to be sold for slavery. The population was then liberated on the volcanic world of Kadovo by the Republic in turn destroying their facilities. Omega manages to sneak into the Zygerian camp and prior to being taken captive, unleashes a young Rancor who we find out is named Muchi. Now this Rancor appears to be different than the one we see in Jabba's palace, which is named Patissa. Hunter beats the head slaver, reacquiring the title for greatest close quarters combat fighter after a humiliating defeat by Fennec in last week's episode. Wrecker then begins challenging Muchi for Alpha, and I like how it becomes a battle of endurance. Both are tired and throwing half-hearted punches, like two boxers after 10 rounds. After winning Muchi over, Omega rides Muchi like Dark Bane did on Lehan after he overpowered a Rancor's mind. Back at the cantina, we find out that Fennec Shan is a newer bounty hunter and is hired outside the guild, which continues to seem like Boba Fett has hired her like Jango had hired Zam Wessel. Seems that the Fett rule of two is one Mandalorian, one sniper. Sid offers them more work in the future and it seems like the story may revolve around nearby systems of Or Mantel, with future episodes having the Bad Batch acting as mercenaries, taking jobs from Sid. Alright, so let me come back to that easter egg in Sid's office. On the far left, we can see a dark box sitting on Sid's desk, and at first glance it appears to be a Jedi holocron. But if you look closely, there seems to be a red design on it, making it appear to be a Sith holocron. In a later shot, we see a close-up of Sid's desk, but the square looks to be completely blacked out. And this appears to be on purpose to give it a sense of other focused even though the blocks to the left of it are in focus. Now Sheev the Wise took the image and enhanced the brightness and confirmed that there is a red pattern that plays out around the box. Now, in Legends and in Canon, there's not a red Jedi holocron that I know about, but there is a video by Mouse Info of them putting a red kyber crystal from Galaxy's Edge in a holocron, which in turn has Yoda quoting warnings of the dark side. So what if a Jedi turned Sith that was the creator of that holocron could bleed their Jedi holocron, similar to how they would bleed a kyber crystal, and in a sense overwrite the information that was contained in it, turning it to the dark side of the force. So in conclusion, what if this holocron belonged to Darth Raven? Let me know in the comments if you do think this is a holocron, and if so, is it light or dark side? Now, in regards to the title Rampage, what if this is foreshadowing Wreckers potentially attacking a Jedi in the future? Now, originally I thought that it might be Ahsoka, but now I'm beginning to think that he may attack Omega, and his style of destruction would be similar to that of a Rancor, and he would be on a Rampage. And what if this event steers Omega down the path of fear, leading to the dark side, similar to Darth Xana? If you want more content from a 30 year Star Wars fan, make sure you subscribe to my channel. You can always change your mind later. May the force be with you.